when we have a little bit more time. But we have the opening tip. This is going to be Christensen, who played well against the Hornets, controlling the opening tip at 6'10", 260. He's a big guy. He was jumping against Komagum of the Hornets, who's 6'9", but much more slender at 215 pounds. And we are underway from the Nets. And I have a bunch of the football players seated right behind me for the first time this year. And they have their masks down. And so they're going to be at full vocal cords. We'll have to be careful with the crowd, Mike. Here comes a three on the way. No good long. Shot was missed by Smith. And now it comes back for the Hornets' first possession of the game. Sacramento State, Wilbon has it in the front court. On the left is Chappelle. Chappelle had a huge night against Idaho in the first meeting between the teams. He had a high 30 points. Missed shot by Fowler. Rebound comes down to the Vandals. Salih with it. Into the front court now, Anderson number four against number four, Chappelle of the Hornets. Dixon throws it to the near side for the Vandals. One minute into the ball game here. Vandals have it stripped away by the Hornets, Chappelle. And now the Hornets take off offensively. Fitzpatrick with a touch shot, no good. Too strong off the glass and an iron. Back the other way comes Mikey Dixon. Dixon drives all the way to the bucket. Double clutch shot and misses it, but an offensive rebound blocked by Comagoom. Sweet block, Tanner Christensen couldn't get the shot to go. And now the Hornets have it back with no score yet. Three ball on the way, no good, iron and glass. Missed by Chappelle and the Vandals. Exciting game so far, but we haven't had any points. We're over a minute and a half into the ball game. Hornet boosters on the far side still on their feet because they wait till the Hornets score before they sit down. Great entry pass and Comagoom from behind. Second block in the first two minutes of the game swatted Christensen who was going in for a dunk and he came from behind him without the foul and swatted it and now a hook shot is up and good by Cameron Wilbon and the Hornets lead two to nothing to start the ball game. Good energy by both teams to start it out here. Anderson throws to the left corner for Idaho. Vandals want to get it on the block to their big man who's been rejected twice, but this time he's going up against a smaller Hornet, but he has it poked away. It's been a bad start for Tanner Christensen. He had 12 rebounds against the Hornets the last time, and he is just taking a beating from the Hornet football team who's taunting him here on the near side. And now here's a long ball for the Hornets. No good. Komagum goes after the rebound. Ball loose. Chappelle saves it, but it saves it into the hands of the Vandals. Komagum's going to get called for a reach-in foul. And that'll be the first foul call of the game. So that gives the ball back to the Vandals. As the Vandals try and get on the board here with 7.23 to go first half. Thanks for being with us tonight on ESPN Plus and also on ESPN Radio. Steve McElroy with you from the nest. Pass to the near side, lob entry pass into the big man. This time he goes for the two-hand jam. Tanner Christensen, after having two shots blocked, the third time's the charm, and the big man for the Vandals gets the flush. Two to two is our score. And Drissett, Zakarian, and Batsell are our officials for this game. And Fowler has the ball. Fowler throws it over. Fitzpatrick bombs away. Good. William Fitzpatrick has averaged 19 points a game his last two ball games, and he's shooting around 40% from the three-point arc. On the season, Fitzpatrick with 59 threes, and he gives the Hornets a 5-2 lead with his first triple. Vandals swing it on the perimeter. Now lob it to the high post to the big man. Back to the left wing, bombs away from three, bottom of the net, good, splash down. Salih with the shot from Gainesville, Virginia, a six foot freshman, Youssef Salih had eight points and four assists in the first meeting. Five to five, our score, 16 minutes to go here. And now Fowler with the fadeaway 10 footer is good and he gives the Hornets the lead back. So we've had a teeter totter game going as the Hornets have led or been tied throughout so far. And now Anderson has it. Anderson to the near side, into Dixon. Now they lob it down low, it's blocked down low. Over the top was Wilbon denying the entry pass. Hornets have it back to Fowler. Fowler on the left to Wilbon. 
Wilbon backs in toward the paint, backs in some more, goes all the way in deep, and now pulls up and puts it off the glass and good. Power move by Cameron Wilbon. He only had two in the first meeting against the Vandals. His best night this year was a 19-point performance against Idaho State. To the right side, open look, not taken by the Vandals. 15 minutes to go, we're five minutes into the game. The Hornets have their biggest lead, a four point advantage for Sacramento State. Lobbed to the high post. Now back to Anderson, eight on the clock. Anderson fires one in deep and here comes, oh, the, the dunk came up short, but the ball bounced off the front of the rim and went up and over for Tanner Christensen. And he makes it a seven point game as the Vandals get the bucket. Getting up, ready to check in as Philip Peppel. Philip Peppel Jr., but that'll be after the media timeout. Here comes Wilbon. Wilbon tries to back his way in powerfully again. He's gonna try and take advantage of this, and he goes up with a hook shot this time, rim and good. So Cameron Wilbon wants to establish some low post dominance as he just backs in the body, gets himself close enough to where he can flip up a hook shot, and he gives the Hornets an 11 to seven lead. Vandals on offense, Dixon. Bounce entry pass again to the big man, two-hand dunk. Well, Christensen's feast or famine. He's had, I think, three shots blocked, a denial, and then he's had a couple of dunks. So it's 11 to nine now, 13.55 to go first half. We only have one foul call in the game, and we have no timeouts yet. Here comes Fowler. Fowler all the way to the bucket, and he scores it for the Hornets. Hornets back up by four, 13 to nine. Vandals bring it across. Our last broadcast here was the quickest game I can remember. That was a televised game. Hour, our hour and 36 minutes total. And this one's off to an even faster pace at the beginning, but that sometimes doesn't hold. Here's a three-pointer from the wing, and it's up and good. Bombed in by... And the second shot is no good. Travante Anderson with the uh, technical foul. Yeah, this football team behind me is gonna have a lot of fun tonight. They haven't been here this season. Remember, we've had the, the strict rules here and now <laughs> they are just getting all over the Vandal players. It's gonna be a comedy show. If I get <coughs> laryngitis or something, I'll just turn the crowd mic around. Hopefully you won't hear any bad words. 14 to 12, Hornets by two after the technical free throw that made it. And now Wilbon tries to back his way in again, and this time he gets called for the offensive foul. So he's posted up twice and been able to back in and make buckets, but that time it, he was considered to be too aggressive. The Vandals have brought in their other big man, Philip Peppel Jr., 6'10", 245 uh, Jr., to replace Christensen right now. He only had two points in the first meeting between the teams. Jameel King <coughs> has come in. He has the ball, number five. Now entry pass is fronted and blocked by Komagoom. Entry pass by Rashad Smith, stolen by Komagoom, and the Hornets have the ball back. Fowler tries a three, nothing but net, except it was on the near side of the net from going through the rim. So that'll bring in Rick Barros the third after the air ball. Rick Barros the third, when he was in the game in Idaho, even though he only had four points and two rebounds, the Hornets were plus eight when he was in the game. That's one of the stats we get is how the team does when you're in the game. So the Hornets had an eight point advantage when Rick Barros the third was in there and uh, lost that game in overtime. 14 to 12 our score, 12 25 to go in the first half. In a, Rowdy nest, not a huge crowd, but a noisy one. Here's a pass over to the left. Vandals bring it back to the wing. Between the circles, here's a dribble drive by King, and a fadeaway shot rattles home. Jameel King from Oakland, California, just down the road. 80 miles to our west, knocks down the shot. On his first little fadeaway, King is a senior. Here's Fowler with it. We're deadlocked at 14 apiece. Fowler in the paint, goes up with a lefty hook shot over the defense and good. So the Vandals have tied it up very briefly at 14. Now the Hornets lead 16 to 14. Bryce Fowler coming into the game with 1,406 points in his Hornet career, one of the leaders all time 
in Hornet Division I basketball. 3-2 zone by the Hornets. Near side Dixon with the ball. Entry to the elbow. Here's King again. King takes off toward the bucket, now fires. Oh, his fadeaway is rejected by Fowler. It was smooth till it was blocked. And now Fitzpatrick for the Hornets, uh, nearly picked clean by Smith, but the ball knocked out of bounds. But the Hornets, Fowler with seven, Wilbon with six, six for Christensen, and Hornets with the ball. Fowler left wing and a whistle and an offensive foul. Was it Wilbon? Yes, it was. Oh, no, it was not. It was against Hugo Clarkin, who just checked in. The seven-footer for the Hornets, number 32 from England. And he must have done something away from the ball. The officials didn't like. So now it's three team fouls on the Hornets, only one on the Vandals. Three ball on the way for the Vandals over and off, no good. Rebound battled for, and Clarkin got fouled from behind. And I believe this one is going to go against... Peppel, yes it does. Philip Peppel knocked Clarkin from behind. So that's the second team foul for the Vandals. First personal foul for Peppel. Fitzpatrick will come in. Midcourt line. Looks Fowler. Finds Fowler on the left. Outside the arc, Bryce Fowler puts it to the elbow, tries a backdoor pass, which is off the foot of a defender and into the hands of the Vandals. Vandals bring it back quickly over to the right corner and stepping out of bounds was King. So that gives it right back to Sacramento State. The Hornets by two, 16 to 14. 10.30 to go in our first half of play. So just one more home game for the Hornets against Eastern Washington on Saturday. Here's Fowler going into the paint, then a trip to Montana to play the two Montana schools. Three ball on the way and knocked down by Rick Barrows the third. The Vandals will host Portland State in Northern Arizona next week after playing Northern Colorado on Saturday. 19 to 14, that's a five point advantage. Biggest lead of the game for Sacramento State. Previous large was four. King wants to make things happen here since he's got probably family and friends in the audience and he's a senior, shot no good. <clears throat> the Idaho Vandal player from Oakland. Lean and shot good. <coughs> so Mikey Dixon knocks down the two. He had 14 in the first meeting between the teams. Mikey Dixon is averaging 17 points a game this year, number three for the Vandals. Had 31 points and 10 rebounds in a game against Weber State. Hornets still lead by three, 19 to 16. Hugo Clarkin trying to make things happen inside and he gets a hand check foul called against Peppel, trying to guard him. Clarkin doesn't do the post up moves very often and try and get the bucket. He's only averaging 1.6 points per game. So it'd be nice to see the freshman from England uh, increase his offensive uh, efforts. And it looked like he was gonna try to do it there. Here's Fowler for the Hornets. Kicks it out to the arc, three ball by Chappelle, over and off, no good. Rebound yanked down by the Vandals. Their big guy, Christensen, is back into the game. Leading rebounder by either team in the ball game. 1916 Hornets, but Vandals have the ball. Anderson takes off with it, cut off by Fowler. Back to King. King, scoop, little pass is deflected and stolen by Clarkin. Hugo with quick hands there, up to Barros the third. Hornets on offense, swing it all the way to the left to Chappelle. Chappelle to Wilbon. Wilbon was off to a good start scoring in this game and now takes it into the paint again and scores it again. Wilbon is playing with determination tonight. He's trying to rack up some big points here. He only had two in the first meeting and in this ball game, Wilbon has been the best enforcer in the paint. He has eight points for Sacramento State in the first 12 minutes of this game. Hornets back up by five. Anderson stops and goes. Anderson tries to get it in and there's a whistle underneath under the rim with 8.01 to go in the half and 
Foul call is gonna go against Bryce Fowler. Yeah, but he got a little bit of the elbow. The Hornets were hoping for a block, but didn't get it. And so this will be considered a shooting foul. Fourth team foul on the Hornets. And Anderson at the line, Trevante from Tacoma, Washington. Washington knocks down the first free throw. The crowd chanting, who's your barber? Ed Anderson. The greatness of uh, college football players teasing college basketball players. You know, Mikey Dixon, number three, they were telling him, you don't have a barber earlier. The second free throw missed. The football team figures they caused it, and now the Hornets get the ball back leading by four. 7.51 to go in the half. The great nature of college students, it's, it's fun. Hugo Clarkin with the hook shot in and out, no good. Rebound pulled down by Christensen. Christensen's gonna have a double-double tonight, I promise you that. I'll probably have one too after the game at in and out Burger. I don't know if they have a shaver or a whatever you call it instead of scissors, it didn't go well. But I've recovered, maybe. Okay, enough of that, let's get back to this great game. Idaho with the ball, it's Dixon. Dixon passes out to the three-point arc, and that's Anderson. Now a three ball from the left wing, back heel high in the air, and Clarkin gets the rebound off the miss. Lead pass for the Barrow. Back out for Chappelle, Hornets by four, their biggest lead was five, close game throughout. Oh, entry pass to Clarkin, he's able to handle it after it was deflected. He wants to back in on the paint, he goes up with a hook shot, no good for him to do that and shoot. But he tried there, it didn't get it to go, but the Hornets get a deal, and here comes Chappelle for Sacramento State, going coast to coast to the bucket and scores. Nice job of hiding the ball because the defensive pressure had caught up to him. And now for the first time in the game, the Hornets lead by six. 23-17 is our score. Fadeaway three is good. Mikey Dixon. Shot that one from nearby Dixon, from the corner right in front of the Hornet bench. 23-20 now, a three-point game. Chappelle for the Hornets around a Clarkin screen. Takes off toward the rack, off the bucket. Nope, didn't get it to go, and we have a whistle out of bounds off the Hornets. It'll come back to the Vandals. Bryce Fowler gonna check back in for the Hornets. And Comagoom. Rick Barros the third, along with Hugo Clarkin, will come out Hornets. Rashad Smith will enter it in for the Vandals. Tanner Christensen is back in, the starter on the low post, and Travante Anderson with the dribble. Anderson to Dixon, entry pass into Christensen. Christensen with a spin, this time scores it over Komagoom. Komagoom got the better of him a few times earlier, but not on that occasion. So now, only a one point lead for the Hornets after the lead had been sick. Elijah McCullough, number 15 in for Sacramento State, a sophomore from Chino Hills, California. Takes the pass, had an opening, didn't take the shot. Instead gives it back to Chappelle. Seven on the clock, Chappelle's gonna look for a screen and then fire something up. Chappelle instead drives all the way to the bucket, misses the layup, Comagoom gets the rebound, puts it back up and scores it. Jonathan Comagoom gets the basket. Comagoom hasn't taken a shot before that one, so he has his first two points of the game. Comagoom in the first meeting didn't have a big game offensively, but he had 12 rebounds on defense. Here's a three, in and out, no good, and Deflected by Fitzpatrick into the hands of McCullough. The Hornets get the ball back with a three-point advantage. Chappelle to Fowler, 4.50 to go in our first half. Head coach Brandon Lair to the Hornets, calling out the offensive signal. Zach Claus for the Vandals with his arms crossed in front of the Vandal bench. And here's Fowler with two moves and a righty bucket. Well, if you are a Vandal fan or you haven't watched much Hornet basketball, Bryce Fowler, the fifth year senior, can shoot with the left, shoot with the right equally well. And he has those back end moves, he has the fadeaway shot, very hard player to defend. Dixon 
Takes off, floats one over Comagoom, no good. Comagoom altered the shot and the Hornets get the rebound. Fitzpatrick into the front court, Hornets lead by five. Fitzpatrick, fadeaway three, no good. Rebound bounces once and controlled by Christensen, who is the leading rebounder in the game. Christensen having a big rebounding game early. And we have a whistle, that was his seventh rebound. We've reached our media timeout with exactly four minutes to go in the half. Hornets lead. Hornets two of seven from three point range. Vandals are three of seven. Both teams just one of two from the foul line, so not a lot of free throw attempts so far in our contest. We like that. So the Vandals have won three games in a row over teams that are in the top six of the Big Sky Conference, shooting over 50% in those games. Right now in this ball game, they are shooting 47% so far. The Hornets at 52%. Vandals trying to cut into the Hornet five point advantage. Dribble penetration into the paint all the way. Flip shot up and out, no good. Rashad Smith with the miss and the Hornets get the ball back. Hornets have six team fouls. Christensen, the leader with seven rebound. Hornets rebounding. It's four for Fitzpatrick. And Comagoom gets fouled, putting up the shot, which is no good, but it'll go to the free throw line where Comagoom is a 69% free throw, free throw shooter. My favorite performance of the year by Comagum. Oh no, they called it an offensive foul and the crowd's booing. Brandon Laird is saying, what happened there? The defender I thought was in the circle. Good officiating crew tonight. I'd wanna see the replay of that. Brandon Laird would too, but I'm sure we'd find out something that we missed. Here's a pass to the left side, three pointer on the way. No good off skids off the front of the rim. Rebound Hornets, outlet pass to Fowler. Fowler takes it all the way, 360 spin to the bucket and the layup good. Bryce Fowler, unstoppable offensive player. And with that bucket, Fowler becomes the leading scorer in the game with 11 points. First player to double figures. Big man, Christensen, gives up the ball. Now a drive, ooh, and a crash and a burn and a, looked like a motorcycle accident there. <laughs> Here comes, you see the drive, and he actually used the off arm and committed an offensive foul before tumbling to the deck. Twenty-nine, twenty-two. they're using the giant Swiffer now, as after the tumble, Anderson goes out of the ball game. That is their new lead of the game. They could expand on that on this possession. It's been a close game throughout, if you joined us late. Chappelle to Barros the third, now to Fowler. Fowler outside the arc gets the high screen and goes past it to the paint and puts up a shot no good. Brandon Laird tried to block me, but couldn't. <laughs> now back the other way, and a three on the way. Ooh, the Hornets, oh, oh, Fowler did commit that foul. He came sweeping by Dixon and he caught the hand of him from behind as Dixon fired up the three and missed, I thought. The official wasn't going to see it, but I told you it's a good crew. Laird still wants to find out what happened at the other end. Meanwhile, Mikey Dixon, first free throw, he likes it. 6'2 senior, 86% free throw shooter, so there's no chance he'll miss this one. He shouldn't even have to. Yep, perfect. And remember, he gets a third. So you play the odds at home. 86% free thrower. Made the first two. Getting ready for the next one. And wow. Didn't even come close to hitting a rim on that. 29-25, so the Hornets' biggest lead now has diminished by three. Seven point advantage is dribbled down to four. 2.03 to go in the half. Chappelle to Fowler. Fowler takes his off toward the paint again and goes up with a righty hook and it rattles in. Shooters touch. He had 22 points, seven rebounds, two assists, and two steals in the first meeting. Trying to improve that. 
in this one. Bombs away for the Vandals, no good. Shot was missed by Bertain, Nolan Bertain. I haven't said his name yet tonight. He's a senior from Portland, Oregon, and now the Hornets have the ball squirt toward the sideline, and they save it, and what happened? Levon Zakarian blew his whistle. And the ball will be entered from the far side of the floor. 17 fouls on the Hornets, 14 fouls on the Vandals. Vandals are gonna bring Christensen out and bring Peppel back in, Peppel Jr. And now the official's coming over to the monitor run by Chris Rote. Son of Brian Rote. Friend of our PA announcer, Will Schilling. And uh, taking a look, they got the little uh, thing that they can circle the play backward and forward as you take a look on TV at the Vandal bench. Vandals have won three in a row. They're rising a little bit in the Big Sky at 5 and 11. The Big Sky Conference Tournament is going to be in Boise, Idaho. The ladies will start on the 8th, the men on the 9th, and it'll be in downtown Boise if you get a chance to go. Quick shot of Chris King, the broadcaster for the Vandals on the radio, on the radio network. And now checking in for the Vandals, Michael Hanshaw. Well, I might have a bad memory, but I don't think I've seen Hanshaw in this game. So he comes in for the final 127, maybe. Hornets lead 31-25 and have the basketball. Fowler. Scoop pass out to Fitzpatrick. Boom, a three-pointer for Fitzpatrick. Win than the Hornets, but there are three games left in the regular season. All the teams in the Big Sky make it to the Big Sky Conference Tournament. You're just playing the regular season for your seeding position, and the winner of that tournament in Boise will go on to the NCAA Tournament. Over to the right wing, here's our first shot of the night, and it's a knuckleball Bertain off the back heel and glass. The Hornets get it back, leading by nine with 52 seconds to go in the half. Chappelle heads off to the left wing, gives it to Fitzpatrick, who circles back to the right, stops and fires a two, no good. Rebound Christensen, his eighth rebound of the game. 36 seconds to go in the half. The Hornets will get the ball back one more time. But right now Smith has it, looking for the coach from, or the call from the coach, Zach Claus. Smith. Passes to the left. Dixon takes off toward the bucket, scoops up a shot off the back rim, no good. Ball tipped twice by the Hornets. Comagoom controls, and now the Hornets will have a final shot as they cross midcourt with 10 seconds to go in the half. Chappelle with eight seconds, and what's that? A hand check, really? Okay. Foul on the Vandals, just one of those little, little touch fouls, which goes against Dixon. That's only the fifth team foul on the... Vandals, so all the Hornets will do is pass it in with 7.6 seconds to go and set up this final shot of the half. The Hornets currently with their biggest lead of the game, a nine point advantage. The Vandals have not led in this game, but they've been very close throughout. Game was tied at 14 apiece. So Fitzpatrick passes it into Chappelle, needs to work quickly. Chappelle takes off and gets fouled, puts it up and scores it. Does that count? No, they're not going to count it. He scooped it in as he was grabbed and was able to get the bucket to go, but it doesn't count. So now the Hornets go to the free throw line to end the first ha half. So the Hornets send Chappelle, a 78% free throw shooter. No, they're going to enter the ball, and I'm sorry because he didn't get the continuation. So it is not a shooting foul, and it's only 16 fouls against the Vandals. They committed two fouls on this possession, and they're going to take a look at the replay just to, just to see if they were correct on that. I apologize for thinking he was going to the free throw line. Well, well should I apologize before I'm 100% sure? Maybe not, because I don't like to apologize. No one does. Again, coming up at the half, we'll have a show for you on TV. I'll come back with stats on the radio. Danny Pinto always does a great job. And then we'll have the second half of this game, which promises to be a good one because the Vandals have been playing great lately. 
They're on, at the nest, they've settled in, they're down by nine. And, okay. 4.3, all they were doing there is checking the clock. So the Hornets get more time back. And for the third time, they will try and score on this possession. Here's Fowler with three on the clock. Fowler spins, Fowler stops, Fowler fires way too hard. No good, but the Hornets still lead. Then Abeta Marco, then Jerome Jenkins, and then Brian Katz. Brandon Laird has more wins in his first year as a Division I coach than any other Hornet coach. So even though the number seems low at seven right now, it's still a record as a first-year coach in Division I with the Hornets. And Bryce Fowler scores immediately to start the second half. Uses the right hand that time. We should keep track of his righty versus lefty baskets because they're pretty equal. He has 15 points to lead all scorers in the game. And the Hornets have their first double-digit lead of the contest at 36 to 25. Hornets knock away a pass, get a steal back to Fitzpatrick. Deep three ball on the way. Bottom of the net. So good. It went right through the net and hit Comagoom in the head, his teammate. <laughs> He'll take that anytime he headed the ball. He's from London. He loves soccer, I'm sure. Oh, shot no good. Left short. Missed by Dixon. Comagoom rebound. Outlet to Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick couldn't get the three off that time. Guarded very well by Smith. The Hornets up 39-25. So a 14-point lead for Sacramento State. It just keeps growing. Wilbon has it for Sacramento. Gets the high screen from Comagoom. He did a good job of driving to the basket in the first half. He's going to try and do it here. Here's the shot. Back rim no good. Rebound pulled down by the Vandals. That was Anderson with the board. Anderson cruises into the front court. Now drives to the baseline. Goes underneath the bucket for a reverse layup, but shot it too hard and missed it. Hornets get it back with a 14-point advantage. Fowler drives into the paint all the way and draws the foul. He wasn't going to go to the bucket. He was just going to kick out the pass. But wait a minute. I was wrong. How many times can I be wrong? Let's take a look at the replay here. The off arm. Hmm. Okay. Well, offensive foul by Fowler. First team foul for the Hornets. Fowler take a peek here has three fouls now so he's in a little bit of danger for the Hornets fake the entry now Dixon lobs it in big guy Christensen blocked by Comagoom third block by Comagoom in the game Fitzpatrick has to dive for the ball saves it to Fowler Comagoom with another block leaves it for the trailer Fitzpatrick fakes and now takes the line drive three back rim high in the air rebound hits the deck and comes out to the Vandals what a job by Comagoom. And the Hornets get a steal as the ball's coming up to the midcourt line. I was obstructed, but the Hornets did get the steal and have the ball right back, leading by 14, two minutes, 15 seconds into our second half. Fitzpatrick at the elbow, now spins toward the paint, stops, fires, wide open. Chappelle. Zach Chappelle knocks down the three and the Hornets go all in to start the second half and build their biggest lead of the game, a 17-point advantage. We're at, back after this on ESPN. Forty-two twenty-five, and they came back to action before the TV was ready, and now they're gonna, they're gonna take two. They're gonna have action take two. We were with you on the radio the whole time, but TV wasn't back, so they'll Start the play over, entering the ball will be Smith. Signaling over to us that we're good to go. <laughs> Entry pass comes in. Anderson. Anderson looks, now back to the left, Smith. And now drive toward the bucket, scoop out. Uh-oh, big guy right in low, but two Hornets there to defend, and Barros the third comes up with a steal. So what would have been bad turns out to be good for the Hornets. Fitzpatrick throws it into Comagoom. Touch pass, Wilbon, slam! Dunkaroo! Poster facial against Christensen. 44-25, 19-point lead. Football team erupts in pandemonium behind us. That was a poster. And now Comagoom goes for the block, doesn't get it, but alters the shot, gets the ball back. 
to Chappelle, to Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick bombs away. Bottom of the net. It's all Hornets. This is the best stretch of basketball this season for Sacramento State by a long way. Defense, offense, splashdown. The crowd's into it more than ever. And the Hornets lead 47-25, a 22-point lead. My goodness, it was a nine-point advantage at the half, and it's all Hornets. And this is against a good Vandal team that's just getting hit hard, and a three comes back the other way. Brandon Laird stomped the floor because he was mad. Salee was left open, wide open for a three, and he didn't like that, and he was... <laughs> Laird was mad that no one guarded him. What, the Hornets had built up a pretty massive lead before that three went down. A 22 point advantage before that. So the first team foul of the second half against the Vandals. And now the Hornets Fitzpatrick gets it in and a no look pass and a little short shot up and good. Komagum with the bucket, only his second basket of the night. Gets the Hornets back up by 21. Smith throws a cross court, opening on the way. Dribble drive to the hoop, the shot off the glass and good. A bucket up and good by Mikey Dixon to make it 49 to 30. 19 point Hornet lead. Wilbon in the front court with the ball, calling out the signals for the Hornets. Now back to Chappelle. Chappelle bounce entry to Wilbon. Wilbon seeing if they'll double team. If they don't, he's gonna take the shot. They don't, he takes the shot and scores it. And celebrations behind the Hornet bench as the Hornets go back up by 21. Wilbon's had a really big game for the Hornets. They've needed extra scoring. 51, the second half the Hornets are seven of nine, 77%. 58% for the game. Vandals with the ball and a foul. It's going to go against Sacramento, against Rick Barros the third. Second team foul for Sacramento State. Two team fouls apiece with 15-10 left in the game. Ball will be entered right of the basket by Jameel King. Or no, that's Anderson, sorry. Anderson passes it into Dixon. Dixon up top, back for Anderson. Anderson looking for Peppel on the low post, but Peppel doesn't get open, and now a drive and another foul. And that one will go against Komagum, number 21 of the Hornets on the drive. Bumped into Anderson. That'll bring Hugo Clarkin in. One player from England replaces another for the Hornets, the two centers from England. Oh, entry pass and a quick block by Wilbon off the shot of Smith. So the Hornets get another block. This has been a block fest tonight for Sacramento State. Altered shot, block shot, five official block shots in the game, but some deflections and some alters, kind of like quarterback hurries and rushes. Here's a shot off balance, running to the basket. Chappelle makes it with the left hand. Everything's dropping for the Hornets in this game. Sacramento State up by 23. 53 to 30, 14, 24 left. Vandals just have to do something. They get an alley-oop dunk. Peppel with the jam off the alley-oop. Make it a 21 point game. But something would have to go very wrong for the Hornets not to hold on to the lead, but they want to keep this momentum as they have Eastern Washington coming to town Saturday. Three ball on the way off the front of the rim, no good. And now into the hands of Wilbon. Wilbon into the lane, goes up with a strong shot, no good. Short, tip back to Wilbon. Now out to the three-point arc. Chappelle, no good off the back rim. And finally the Vandals get it back. Up the floor, Vandals. To the right side. Over to the corner, three on the way. Line drive, no good. Rebound. Pulled down by the Hornets. Barros the third with the rebound. Now Chappelle comes up. Near side pass to Wilbon. Wilbon near side, Chappelle. 
Chappelle wide open. And here we go. Hornets with a big lead, 53-32. As the Vandals get it into the front court. Anderson to the left to Dixon, to the left corner, lob entry pass to Peppel. Peppel with the turnaround shot too strong. And the rebound, Sacramento State. Fitzpatrick races ahead of Fowler. Fowler instead takes it all the way inside. Fade away shot with the left hand, no good. Skids off the rim, rebound yanked down by Peppel. And the Vandals have it back all the way to the bucket. Vandals are trying to score quickly. Hugo Clark and with the block and the fans love it. And a reach in foul immediately by Rashad Smith fouling the Hornets. Ooh, fourth for Rashad Smith. So Smith in foul trouble. Smith hasn't scored in the game and only has two rebounds, so not quite as big of a threat to the Vandals if he were to foul out. Here comes Fowler all the way to the bucket. His scoop is no good, but he'll go to the free throw line. Bryce Fowler with a quick move toward the hoop. 12.26 left to go. And the official actually said please to Brandon. Again, I like this officiating crew. I think they're, they're solid. So at the free throw line, Bryce Fowler trying to expand the Hornet lead. He has 15 points and his free throw is no good. It's short. If there's, he's a 65% free throw shooter. He'll be able to move on and play basketball after this, his fifth season with the Hornets somewhere. Hornets have a lot of players overseas playing. Fowler's second free throw is a line drive. Good, gets one of two. And now has 16 for the game. Hornets lead 54-32, 12-22 to go. Very high dribble by Anderson. And the pass over to the bench goes out of bounds. <laughs> Trevante Anderson was dribbling the ball as high as his shoulder there for a moment. Elijah McCullough's back in for the Hornets. The Vandals are gonna bring back in local, Jameel King. And now Zach Claus is having a little conversation with Trevante Anderson. Fowler gets hand checked. And this foul against is Ethan Kilgore from Missouri. He's a freshman who's come into the game. So Zach Claus, the head coach of the Vandals, going a little deeper on the bench. Fowler tries to put the Hornets up by more than 22 with the fadeaway 17-footer. Good. Bryce Fowler. Well, if you put the little marks on the board from where he scores from in a basketball game, he spreads it out all over the place. He now has 18 to lead all scorers in the game. And the Hornets up by 24, their biggest lead. Drive toward the bucket. Kick out pass. Three ball on the way. Good. Three-point basket by Rashad Smith. after the Hornets had their biggest lead. 11.30 left. Chappelle for the Hornets on the left wing to Fowler. Fowler with a little stumble. Now needs to give up the ball. Stopped his dribble back out for McCullough. Back to Fowler. Fowler draws the double team. Kicks it out. Wide open three look. No good. Front rim. Chappelle missed the shot. Rebound to the Vandals. Dixon front court with the ball. Swings it right, now back to Dixon. Hornets in a 2-3 zone. Nope, they're coming out to some man now. And here's a drive toward the bucket all the way, double clutch. Hugo Clark in with another block. Wow, what a block night for the Hornets. Sacramento State with seven block shots. Timeout on the floor, 10.53 to go. Hornets lead 56-35. So Christensen will check back into the game for the Vandals. So the Hornets will uh, will go with Hugo Clark in the seven footer to try and stop Christensen. And Clarkin's got a couple blocks tonight. He's having a good game. He's been impressive. The freshman from England and now a fadeaway shot for the Vandals. Just rattles out. No good. By Dixon. Now Will Bond front court for the Hornets. Again, the best performance of the year by the Hornets, I think. Here comes Chappelle near side. McCullough. To Chappelle, 
Chappelle stops, looking around. Gets the ball into the hands of Wilbon. Wilbon, with the clock running down, puts up a shot, hits the rim twice, no good. Ball tipped out of bounds. Who was that off of? And it's Hornet ball. Hugo Clarkin was there with three Vandals, and the Vandals ended up tipping it out of bounds. They don't like the call. And back into the game comes Salih. Yusuf Salih. Out of the game for the Vandals goes Rashad Smith. So, here comes Dixon with it. Hornets in control, up by 21. 10, 16 to go. Very few of the Division I games this year have the Hornets had a big advantage like this. And a dribble drive shot, no good. Hornet foul. Ethan Kilgore was the Vandal driving to the bucket. And Clarkin gets called for the foul on a very gentle touch. But he doesn't complain. So Kilgore is a 75% free throw shooter. He's just a freshman from Missouri. His first free throw good. Kilgore is second, is good as well. 56-37 Hornets. If we were playing quarters, we'd be entering the fourth quarter right now. Wilbon front court for Sacramento. Gets the screen from Fitzpatrick to the right wing, Chappelle. Chappelle gets double teamed, kicks it out. Wilbon, Wilbon takes off toward the bucket. He's cut off by a double team. Clark and the football team wants him to shoot and he gets fouled, reach in foul. Committed by Kilgore. Not a good reach in foul when you have a guy that doesn't really shoot from outside of the paint with the ball, but it hasn't been a perfect night for the Vandals. I didn't get to go to Moscow this year, and I'm looking forward to seeing the new arena that the Vandals had. It looks great on TV, but what looks even better is a Hugo Clarkin two hand jam. Like I said, he only averages 1.6 points per game, but he just got a jam there, and he's had a couple blocks. Clarkin's playing well in this game. He has four rebounds as well. 58-37. And now Kilgore driving underneath the basket. Oh, a block again! Hugo Clarkin. Manute Ball Jr. <laughs> three ball on the way. Good! From in front of the Hornet bench, and that's McCullough with the three. So everyone is joining the party for the Hornets as Elijah McCullough knocks down his first shot of the game and gets a three, 61-37. This game is not getting closer. Oh, Fitzpatrick touches the hand of Dixon as he was shooting a three. Shot no good, but three free throws for Dixon. Okay, play your game at home right now. Will Dixon make all three? It's even money right now. Whoops, they're coming over to the press table. They're going back to see if it was a two or a three point shot attempt. And it's a three. It'll be three free throws, okay. Will Dixon make all three? Will he hit the rim? That's what I wanna say because he'll make all three, but will he hit the rim on any of these free throws? First one, rim, rim, good. Okay. So Dixon knocks down the first. Ready for his second. Perfect on the second, right in the middle. Dixon is five of five from the line. He has 12 points in the game. And now this will be his sixth consecutive free throw that he's made right here as he dribbles the ball, stops, fires, and makes it. That one did hit some more rim, though. That wasn't as nice as his other three free throws. 61-40. Hornets lead big with 8.45 to go. I've had to turn the crowd mic down, and I don't know how much you're picking up of the football players behind me. They've been clean, though. They had, I don't remember foul words being spoken. Maybe not friendly, but they're having fun. Shot no good, missed by Chappelle, rebounded by the... 
Vandals. Vandals with a little bit of momentum right now. Here's King with it, crossover. King fades his way in, delivers it back out. Christensen, the big guy, gives it back to King. King to the bucket, King scores. Well, King has been putting out big effort when he's been out there in this game because he's got friends and family in the audience. But he only has four points in the game. He hasn't played very many minutes. 8.05 to go. And Idaho has closed it to a 19-point lead. It was 24 at its peak. Fitzpatrick for three. Good. What a great three-point shooter he is. Again, averaging 19 points the last two games he played. Almost all of his shot attempts this year have been three-point attempts. And he now has five out of seven from three-point range. So he has 15 points. All on threes, and Clarkin with another lead. Entry pass, taking a while to get in, and finally into King. Anderson, Anderson explodes toward the bucket, kicks it out to the right side for the open three, look, no good short. Rebound Fitzpatrick after the missed by Salih. Fitzpatrick for the Hornets, trying to stay away from the defensive King. 7.13 to go. And now a three ball by Wilbon. Wilbon knocks down a three, wow. Wilbon has been scoring his points in tight tonight. That's his first three pointer and that gets him to 15 points to match Fitzpatrick. Bucket on the other end, but an offensive foul is going to go against Anderson. Anderson. Oh, it's defensive, okay. And yeah, that's an offensive foul. Will Schilling. I have enough trouble on my own, but our longtime PA announcer and the voice of the Lady Hornets, Will Schilling, on the PA, called the foul one way, then called it the other way, then called it back the other way. And I fell for it. Yep. Beverly Hills Cop, 1985. I fell for the banana in the tailpipe. Here we go. Here's a drive all the way in and good by Zach Chappelle. That was an easy bucket for the Hornets. 69-42 with 6.44 to go. Great night for the Hornets. We've announced a lot of close games here. The Hornets have lost most of their close games this season. And they've had a decent number of them. But tonight, bam, Sacramento State broke out to a five point lead at 19 to 14 and then kept building it from there. Nine points at the half. And then to start the second half, it was all Hornets. Let, let's put it this way. It was 34-25. And then it was 47-25. So the Hornets had the first 13 points of the second half. At the line, one and one, misses the front end. Christensen just is denying himself the ability to get the double-double. He's had 10 rebounds since midway, just about midway through the first half, and has been stuck on eight points for, for a long time. Here comes Fowler all the way into the paint. Oh, his shot is no good. Good defense. Rebound pulled down by the Vandals. King with it. King on the wing. King drives. King open. King scoops and airballs it. He was trying to draw the foul because he didn't pay attention to the basket and just threw up a scoop airball. Comagoom to Fitzpatrick with six minutes to go now. Fitzpatrick to Chappelle. Bounce to oh, Comagoom. Spins to the bucket, goes up, comes down, goes back up. The ball must have been knocked out of his hands. Yes, it was. The Zakaria, the official, just indicated, Zakarian, um, that it was knocked out of his hands. That's why. Otherwise, it would have been a travel, but he made the bucket 71-42. It's almost a 30-point lead. It's a 29-point lead. It keeps growing. Hornets could save some of these points for their game against Eastern Washington on Saturday. Lob entry pass and no one home. Rashad Smith. Threw it to the empty, empty man. Wow, good Vandal team, and tonight they are as cold as ice. And the Hornets are feeling with this enthusiasm coming from the crowd like a regular Hornet nest team in this game. 71-42, 5-13 left. The key is you're going to have what you get from Fitzpatrick, but Wilbon being able to score in the low post has opened things up. Fitzpatrick's been red hot from three, and it's been defensive intensity forcing poor shooting by the Vandals as well. So all good if you're a Hornet tonight. Here's a cross-court pass, deflected, fronted, stolen, Salee with the steal. Lead pass to the right wing. 
and a whistle. It'll be a Hornet foul. That'll be their eighth team foul, so it'll be free throws. Jonathan Komagum with the foul, 447 left. And here's the opportunity for Christensen to finally get to 10 points. He has 10 rebounds. Nine of them are defensive rebounds. Christensen is a 62% free throw shooter from Spokane Valley, Washington, a freshman, and he missed. So the Hornets get it back. Maybe he'll never get to 10. Fowler takes off toward the bucket, draws the foul, throws up the shot, no good, but he'll go back to the free throw line. Bryce Fowler with 18 points. He's averaging 17 and a half on the season. He's averaging more than that in league play. His best game was 32 points earlier against Montana. And again, he's one of those players that'll go down in Hornet history as one of the best. This is his 102nd start of his long Hornet career. And the first free throw good. That's pretty good in college basketball to have 102 starts. That would be over 25 starts a game for four years, but he got the bonus fifth year. Although the Hornets didn't play that many games last year, they only had 20 because of cancellations, and they've had some cancellations this year. Fowler knocks down two free throws. He now got is back to 20 points for the game. He had 22 in the first meeting between these teams that Idaho won in overtime up in Moscow. For those of you who don't know, Moscow is only about 15 minutes from Pullman, Washington. It's right on the border. Here's a three on the way, no good. And offensive rebound, and the ball kicked out of bounds off of Salih and back to the Hornets. That's the way I saw it, but that's like a coin toss as it is still Idaho ball. It's not my best angle. Near side of the court for me, other end of the floor. 4-12 to go, entry pass knocked away by the Hornets into the hands of Chappelle, they get it back. Chappelle wants to go coast to coast, he does, he gets fouled, he scores and he counts. Gee whiz, Yusuf Salih committed the foul and I don't know how that ball in. You gotta see the replay of this on TV. He's exploding past the back and the ball got semi knocked out of his hand and then he just had to flip it or else he was gonna pass the backboard. And he flipped it, spun in off the glass. Wow, what a shot and a three point opportunity. 75-42 now. That's a 33-point lead. Wow, this is by far the best performance by the Hornets all season. Three-point play is good. The Hornets defeated William Jessup in their first game of the year under head coach Brandon Lard, 89-59. to So that was a 30-point win, but that was against a team that's not Division I. So this will be the best game of the year for the Hornets. Here's a little stop and go and a floater no good. Komagum with the rebound for the Hornets after the Vandal miss. Only 3.42 to go in the game. And ball knocked away from the Hornets. Stolen by the Vandals. Salih leads it up to the floor and a slam dunk. Last second decision by Nolan Bertain from Portland, Oregon. The senior gets the dunk. So a little highlight for Bertain. And Bertain, that was his first basket of the game. 3.15 to go. Hornets with four on the clock. Oh, Wilbon stripped. So a little bit of good play by the Vandals as King stripped the ball away. Now the Vandals trying to go for another hoop to get it back to Bertain who's coming off of a bucket. Gets it inside to Peppel. Peppel shot, no good. Fowler with the rebound. Hornets want to run. This is good practice for the Hornets. They play a lot of half-court offense. But tonight, they haven't been counted down like they have all season. They usually have like a dozen possessions where it's four or three, and then they have to shoot. Tonight, they've been playing a little bit more up-tempo, which will surprise the Vandals. Chris King, the Vandal radio voice, 
Goes, you guys play such slow tempo that can throw us out of our rhythm. But not tonight, the Hornets are up tempo and they score and get a foul right there. Bryce Fowler with 22 points. We're gonna take a break. The Hornets lead by 30. Anybody in the big sky with this performance tonight, no joke about that. As the Hornets lead 78 to 44 over the Idaho Vandals on their best performance of the season. And as we come back from the break, Bryce Fowler will be at the free throw line to try and add to his 22 points. The Hornets up by 34. I said 32 going into the commercial, but 34 with that bucket by Fowler. Fowler shot good as he gets the three point play. So Fowler comes out. The Hornets could probably go more into their bench now, but the five they have on the floor are players who have played a decent amount tonight. But you never know, Brandon Lair's probably having fun having the up-tempo Hornets playing right now as the ball's flipped up and in. And Kendall McHugh with the bucket. His first bucket of the night, his first shot of the game as he just comes in. Number 11, Kendall McHugh from Virginia, 6'1", sophomore. He's only played in four games all season, so obviously Zach Claus is going to the bench here for the rest of this game and just letting some guys get some time and Ooh, a holding foul is going to be called against Michael Hanshaw, who also has seen only nine games of action this season. He played earlier in the game. We mentioned him once. Oh, yes, the Hornets are bringing in Theo Sang. Sang has had very little playing time. He's a freshman from Davis, California, but he's going to come in here for uh, the last 157, averaging 1.3 points in his action, and oh yeah, first free throw is good by Jonathan Komagum. Komagum hasn't had the big scoring night, but he's been a defensive uh, bear out there. And now Fitzpatrick comes out after having a great three-point shooting night, knocked down five threes in seven attempts, and into the game is Xavier Ford from Pasadena, California. He's appeared in just five games for the Hornets. And now the Hornets up 80 to 46. So that's a 81, sorry, the free throw, he just got put on the board. So Komagum comes out 81-46, 35-point lead for the Hornets. So King has it. Three ball from deep downtown, glass ball, missed wide right, but an offensive rebound. Same player, bombs away, knocks it in, wow. Kendall McHugh missed by three feet right on the first, but then got the ball back and give him credit because he fired right back up a three, it didn't scare him. He's only played in four games this year. 160 pounder, knocks down a three for the Vandals. If you don't succeed, try again, right? One fifteen to go, the Hornets in command, just running down some time. I know that Ford, who doesn't have any points on the year, would love to get a shot off, and the Hornets turn it over. Wilbon turned it over. I just want number 13 for the Hornets, Ford, to make a bucket. He has a rebound, but he doesn't have a basket this year. And now also into the game is Chris Hawley for the Hornets. He's a freshman from Sacramento. And now for the first time tonight, Marcus Green, who usually plays for the Hornets some minutes, He's out there, and Teano Hardy, who's been a little bing dinged up, he was playing a decent amount for Sacramento in other games. He's out there. So the Hornets have five players on the floor who have logged, well, there's nobody out there that's played more than two minutes. Now drive toward the hoop, and a shot, oh, a foul with 103 to go. So we're gonna have new faces on either side scoring. Maybe, but the Hornets will only get one more shot because when they get the ball again, then you run out the clock. Either that or the other team presses, and they press, and then you lose a shoe, and then you're gonna get a 10 second call, and then you call a timeout, and then the other coach gets mad at you, and then the other coach tells you he's not gonna forget that, and then you grab his elbow, and then, what am I talking about? Yeah, some of you might have seen that. If you don't, phone a friend. That happened in college basketball a week ago. Jameel King, gets the free throws. So King from Oakland, California, gets to six points for the game. He's a senior, so. Drive, inside, kick back out. Here's an opportunity. Not taken, instead it's a long ball on the way, missed by Green. 
I was hoping Ford was going to get that shot. Shot no good. Hornets have the ball with 40 seconds, so they get one more shot. Let's see who's going to score here. Driving to the basket. Hawley goes to the bucket and scores it. Chris Hawley, he's only played in a few games for the Hornets, gets the bucket to go. 83-51, and now we have just 33 seconds to go, so the Hornets will just run out the clock the next time they get it. McHugh, King, King drives, King stops. Kilgore now tied up. Back out, King, King with 10 on the shot clock. King searching for an opening and then just fires, no good. Rebound Hornets, Hornets are gonna run out the clock. Hardy has it, Hardy will bring it up. Five seconds to go, what, oh. Brandon Laird says thank you to the 